Today, we're attempting to beat the original Plants vs. Zombies 2 from 2013 with only one seed slot. This version of Plants vs. Zombies 2 is vastly different from the game we know today, from the levels, challenges, and even the sun currency. The rules for the challenge are simple. We can only use one plant per level, hence the title of the video, and we won't be using any premium plants or power-ups. This will be a difficult yet nostalgic challenge, so let's take a ride down memory lane and beat OG Plants vs. Zombies 2 with one seed slot. <laughs> First of all, we have the tutorial. Luckily, we can skip to day 4. While I blast through day 4, I'll quickly explain the basic strategies of this challenge. Since waves are triggered by dealing damage to zombies in the current wave, we want to stall as long as possible to buy valuable time. You can see me doing this whenever I plant a plant at the last possible second, keeping the zombies alive for as long as possible. Time is so valuable because more time means more sun. Since our only source of sun is the sun falling from the sky because our plant in each level can't be a sunflower, or else we'll have no way of defeating the zombies. This is essentially the same strategy we used in the main 1 seed slot series on the present day Plants vs Zombies 2. However, one big change between present Plants vs Zombies 2 and the classic Plants vs Zombies 2 is the amount of sun that actually falls from the sky. Each sun drop in modern Plants vs Zombies 2, as we know, gives 50 sun. However, in this version of the game, sun drops only give 25 sun. This effectively halves the rate of sun production, making this challenge even more difficult. And would you look at that, we beat the first level. Now on to Ancient Egypt. Whoa, did that zombie just drop a note? I wonder what it says. Do you like free stuff? Well, yeah, who doesn't? Do you like epic mobile strategy games? Of course you do, you're watching this video. Then look no further than today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a free-to-play strategy RPG filled with content to explore. So craft a team from over 700 unique champions with heaps of skills and stats that you can customize and unlock in the game's various modes. Raid's got you covered with some of the best graphics I've ever seen in a mobile game. Come on, this looks like a console game. If you get Raid right now using the link in the description or the QR code on screen, you can get a bunch of free stuff only for a limited time. Most importantly, use the promo code MONKEYKING. You can get the legendary champion Sun Wukong absolutely free. Sun Wukong is a popular character in Chinese mythology who is known for his superhuman intelligence and magical abilities. This Monkey King is extremely powerful and has helped me blast through the campaign Pain, which is my favorite game mode. With his insane stats and abilities that are unlike any of the other champions in the game. He can steal opponents buffs, passively revive himself, and use his Staff of Wonder attack which ignores half of his target defense and deals massive damage. And that's not all. Using my link or the QR code, you'll also get these two epic champions, and using the promo code I love free stuff, you'll get this rare champion. Seriously, there's been no better time to install this game, so make sure you get Raid for free right now with the link in the description, or else you'll miss out on all of these champions, especially Sun Wukong with the promo code Monkey King. Back to the video. Day 1 was fairly straightforward, but took ages because there's no fast forward button in this version of the game, which is probably the worst part about it. This level also introduced raw zombies who stand still while attracting sun. I manipulated this by letting them attract the sun right up until the last second where I grabbed the sun before they could catch it. This meant I could stall them on the spot for as long as possible. After this level we unlocked the beloved world map, which is also very different in this version of the game. This is probably nostalgic for a lot of people. Day 2 introduced plant food, which will definitely be useful for the challenge. Apart from that, this level was also simply spamming pea shooters, as was day 3. The next level was the special delivery level. For these types of levels, the same rules apply, we can only use one plant from the conveyor belt. This was the level where we had our first loss, due to the disgracefully small hitboxes of the Bloomerang's boomerangs. I mean, come on, these hit the zombie fair and square. I switched huh? to Cabbage Pult and had another really close death before beating the level by giving Bloomerang another try. Day 4 was a breeze with Pea Shooter. However, day 5 was a technical roadblock. This level would normally introduce the power-ups to the player. So, you may be wondering, what's the problem? You cleared this level in the original one seed slot video. Well, the issue is another disparity between OG Plants vs Zombies 2 and modern Plants vs Zombies 2. That being the pinch power-up. Power pinch is a power-up which existed in the early days of Plants vs Zombies 2 to be later replaced by Power Snow. Power Pinch works by pinching the zombies on the screen by squeezing your fingers on their heads. Simple enough, right? Well, to get this early version of the game, I'm playing the game on an emulator on my PC. I can't exactly squeeze the screen with my mouse, can I? So I was basically softlocked on this level. But, after doing some research, I found a solution to the problem. The solution came through this video which showed a way to get around this technical issue by creating some artificial actions in the emulator to trick the game into thinking you're pinching, 
when you're just furiously scrolling the mouse wheel. So thanks for basically making this video possible, JJ Speedruns. This was fidgety at first, and kind of random whether it would pinch or not, but I eventually got consistent enough at it to beat the level. The other two power-ups, Power Zap and Power Toss, worked as normal. And what did we get for spending so long beating that level? Iceberg Lettuce, which is completely useless to us. Day 6 was no problem. It introduced Explorer Zombies, but P should have took care of them, without the need of Iceberg Lettuce, of course. The same couldn't be said about Day 7, where P Shooter couldn't control the vast amounts of Tomb Raisers and Camel Zombies. I switched to Cabbage Pult, who dealt with these better. Side note on Cabbage Pult, its plant food ability is insane for this challenge as it deals a bunch of damage to every zombie on the board, something Pea Shooter can't do. Its plant food ability almost makes me prefer it over Pea Shooter. Day 8 was definitely a nostalgia trip, as it was the Camel Memory minigame only found in these original versions of the game. Day 9 was a significant step up in terms of difficulty compared to the previous levels. The Pharaoh zombies are extremely tanky and caused quite a few losses. I switched to Bonk Choi in an attempt to handle the Pharaoh zombies with some heavier hitters. This worked for the whole level until... But I tried again, and with some well-timed plant foods to beat the zombies in lanes without lawnmowers, we won. You may have noticed I got carried by the lawnmowers on that final wave. This will be a common strategy throughout the run as the levels and waves become more and more intense, meaning we'll have to try and save our lawnmowers for the final wave of each level to save us. Day 10 was surprisingly easier than day 9. I didn't even have to rely on lawnmowers this time around here. Instead, just spamming cabbage pulled plant food, which was rather overpowered. And that's another thing to note for this challenge. Plant food is key, as it compensates for the limited sun and plant variety with increased firepower. As you can see by cabbage pulled wiping out a whole lawn of zombies. Now we've reached day 11, the final level of ancient Egypt. Nope, this isn't a zomboss fight or even a gargantuan battle. Neither of these zombies existed in the original game. Instead, the final levels of each world in this version are more faithful to the original game, just an all-out spamming of every zombie encountered in the world. This doesn't mean the level is easy, not by any means. This is down to the conveyor belt gimmick. The first special delivery level was a breeze since the conveyor belt basically only gave bloomerangs, which we could use. However, this level's conveyor belt gives most of the plants we've encountered so far, including repeater, bloomerang, walnut, bonk choy, and the list goes on. Normally, this would be a good thing. However, for this challenge, we want only one single plant. The more plants that the conveyor belt can give, the less likely it is for us to get the one plant that we want. This is why Special Delivery 1 was an easy level, but this level is an absolute disaster. I tried for hours and hours to beat this level between Repeater and Bloomerang, but I could never get enough of them for the conveyor belt to deal with the vast amounts of zombies. Technically, this level could be possible, I think, but it all depends on luck. If you sit down and grind this same level for hundreds of hours, I'm sure it would be possible, but I'm not prepared to do that. At least in the regular 1 seed slot series, we had a fast forward button to make mindlessly grinding RNG conveyor belt levels like this more bearable. If any of you want to try this for yourselves, be my guest, but unfortunately I'm going to have to call the challenge a loss with a big asterisk because technically this level could be possible. I just don't know. But that doesn't mean this video is over. Far from it, actually. For some fun, let's see if the rest of the game is possible and or how much of it is possible with this challenge. You may be thinking this is where we advance to Pirate Seas, but no, there's another huge difference between the game today and the old game, and that's the world system. To progress to the next world in this version, you need to unlock the next world with stars. To get Pirate Seas, we need 8 stars. Stars are granted from either beating special levels like the ones locked behind these key gates, or by replaying the levels with the gimmicks we know and love like stopping zombies, trampling flowers, producing certain amounts of sun, etc. To get some easy stars, we're going to do some of the special levels behind the key gates. To unlock them, you need to use your world specific keys that randomly drop from zombies in their respective world. For example, we need 4 ancient Egypt keys to unlock the mummy memory path of levels. Luckily, the sheer amount of grinding day meant that I got an abundance of keys so we won't have any problems opening these gates. I chose to do the Mummy Memory 1, 2 and 3 levels because they don't involve seed slots which negates the extra difficulty of this challenge and because we also unlock the extra plant food slot by opening the gate which will come in handy later. I also chose to do Last Stand 1, 2 and 3 because of the sun trophy that we unlock, giving us more sun at the start of each level and the fact that all of them could easily be beaten by just filling the lawn with a single plant also making these levels seamless for the challenge. I swept through Last Stand 1 and 2 with Bloomerang and 3 with Repeater. This brought us up to more than enough stars to unlock Pirate Seas. 
Day one was easy due to Cabbage Bolt, whose plant food ability is great for controlling the larger waves of zombies seen in this world compared to ancient Egypt. We unlocked Colonel Pult, who will be essential for this challenge due to his ability to insta-kill seagulls, but most importantly stall zombies so we can get as much sun from the sky as possible. Day 2 demonstrated all of the above with Colonel Pult. Day 3 and 4 were also obliterated by Colonel Pult, despite the loss of some lawnmowers. Day 5 was the Coconut Cannon minigame that I believe is still in Plants vs Zombies 2 to this day, albeit heavily nerfed since we only get like one coin for beating the level now. But back in the day, these levels were hands down the best way to grind coins, as you can see. Day 6 was close with Colonel Pult, but the bucket heads were too much. I swapped a Snapdragon and timed its plant food ability to defeat the bucket heads to create an indestructible wall of fire. I continued into Day 7 with Snapdragon, but the Captain Zombies kept stealing them with their parrots. So I switched to Colonel Pult, who could butter the parrots and stall the rest of the zombies until the final wave, where the lawnmowers could take care of them. It was very close though. Day 8 was hard due to the imp cannons, but with some optimal kernel gameplay it was possible. I lost day 9 because of this stupid imp that was on like 1 HP. I used Snapdragon instead which cleared through the level on my second attempt. Day 10 was the final battle of Pirate Seas. Despite this, it only took a few attempts with 3 Peter to beat it. This is probably due to the fact that the conveyor gave less plant variety than Ancient Egypt Day 11. Regardless, it's still weird how this level was infinitely easier than that level. But, just like Ancient Egypt, the final level isn't the end of our pirate tenure. It cost 20 stars to unlock Wild West, and we only have 5, so we'll need 15 more. I decided to unlock the Cannons Away Path to clear all 3 Coconut Cannon minigames, and unlock the Shovel Boost perk which will be useful. This puts us at 8 stars. I didn't bother unlocking any of the other Pirate Seas gates, as the rewards for doing so were Cherry Bomb, Spyrocroc, and an extra Seed Slot, which are all pretty much useless for the challenge. To get the 9th star, I revisited day 1 and cleared the mold colony objective with Snapdragon. For the 10th star, I wanted to do day 1's second star, but it was a produced sun level, which we can't do for obvious reasons. So I revisited day 2 and the star criteria was don't spend sun for 60 seconds. I easily did this with Colonel Paul, who could stall zombies long enough to last the 60 seconds. For the 11th star, I stayed at day 2 where the objectives were don't spend more than 1500 sun and don't lose more than one plant. This was easy with Colonel Paul. To get the 12th star, I went to day 3 and beat the objective don't have more than 12 plants. Obviously this wasn't much of a challenge because we don't have the kind of sun to get 12 plants on the board anyway. This was simple with Snapdragon. However, the second star of day 3 was a produced X sun star. This forced us to move on to day 4 where I got the 13th star for not losing more than 2 plants. I picked up the 14th star from day 8 for spending less than 2250 sun and a 15th star from the same level by never having more than 14 plants and defeating 10 zombies in 15 seconds. I moved on to day 9 to get my 16th star by defeating 20 zombies in 30 seconds which again was easy with snapdragon and its OP plant food ability. At this point we had gotten all of the stars that we could by revisiting mainline pirate seas levels because the remaining stars were all either unlocked by producing sun or stopping zombies from trampling flowers really far up the lawn which was impossible. So I went back to ancient Egypt in search of more stars since stars do carry over between worlds. Since the game was very short in the early days, it makes sense that it would be designed in such a way that encourages revisiting levels in this way, unlike the modern Plants vs Zombies 2 where there's basically no incentive to revisit levels, as even the treasure yeti has been removed from the game. I went to Ancient Egypt Day 1 to claim my 17th, 18th and 19th stars. I had to stop the zombies from trampling these flowers which was extremely close. Then beat the Mold Colony Challenge for the 2nd star and finally for the 3rd star spend less than 1250 sun and not lose more than one plant. All of this was possible with Colonel Pult. I again used Colonel in Day 2 without spending sun for 30 seconds to claim my 20th star. This was finally enough for us to unlock Wild West. Day 1 was a typical breeze with Colonel Pult, and Day 2, and Day 3. Day 4 was a lot more of a struggle due to the introduction of Poncho Zombies. I ended up using Snapdragon for its plant food ability to wipe out all the tanky Poncho Zombies and Coneheads. Unfortunately though, Day 5 is our second impossible level. This is because it's a not okay corral level that forces us to use pea shooter as it's the one plant given for the first wave. They then proceed to only give a few pea shooters before offering better plants that we obviously can't use. 
By the time a bunch of tanky coneheads and bucketheads come in, we only have a measly two pea shooters, which is quite clearly not enough. This brings back bad memories from the main 1C slot video because the level that made that challenge impossible, Wild West Day 4, is the same level, just moved one day earlier from this version for whatever reason. So yeah, these videos have made me kind of hate not okay corral levels. We had to switch things up to lightning read because of the chickens in day 6, which was otherwise easy. Day 7 introduced bull zombies, but I just stalled them with kernel pool. The rest of the level was quite easy, but it required lawnmowers to take care of the bulky poncho zombies. Day 8 was going well until the numerous piano zombies sped up all the other zombies, allowing them to destroy my lightning reeds and in turn clear the path of the zombie chickens to have at my brains. I switched to Snapdragon and, well, the zombies were toast. Pun intended. Day 9 started well and ended badly, mainly due to the bulls. So I switched to Snapdragon who took care of the bulls, but then the prospectors wiped out the whole row of Snapdragons. However, I solved this issue by switching to Peapod, an unconventional pick for the challenge. I did this because they could be moved on the minecarts to avoid prospectors and their plant food abilities dealt with the bulls nicely. I managed to beat the level using this strategy and the combined firepower of the Peapod. Usually I hate the minecart gimmick because I never use it so it just wastes space on a lawn, but this is a rare occasion where I was actually bothered using them and got some value out of it. From the get go, day 10 looked to be a challenge. This was the final level of the whole game. I tried using Melon Pult who could take care of the ponchos, coneheads and bucketheads, but I couldn't handle bulls or chickens. I briefly attempted to win with coconut cannon, but they were extremely rare to get on the conveyor belt and were hopeless against chickens as well. In desperation I also tried Peapod who couldn't handle the tanky zombies. Things were looking grim. But I figured I'll give Melon Pult another chance since it was the most promising of the available plants and one of the more common ones from the conveyor belt. I found that by spamming plant food whenever chicken wrangler zombies hopped onto the screen, I would sometimes just get lucky and splash all the chickens. This was rare though, since most of the time the melon pults would just miss all of the chickens. Seriously, it was painful to watch the melon pults try to toss melons at the speedy chickens. However, after a couple of hours of attempting this level, I started to get good at moving the melons around and spamming plant food to predict when to kill all the chickens. But the level still wasn't over. As I said earlier, the melon pults had a hard time stopping bulls as well. And can you guess what the final wave looks like? Yeah, a bull in every lane. I would lose over and over again because the bulls were running all the way across the lawn and throwing their imps over the melon pools. Just as I was about to give up, I noticed something very important though. Every time I reached the final wave, one bull would always stop charging for seemingly no reason at the front of the lawn. I thought this was some kind of bug or glitch, but then I realized the bull that stopped would always correspond to the lane where the empty minecart was on the track at the front of the lawn. I knew the bulls would stop charging when they hit a plant, but I never knew the bulls would stop charging when they hit an empty minecart. I just always assumed that minecarts needed plants on them to stop the bulls charging. So after a few attempts, I reached the final wave again, but this time pulled the empty minecart all the way across the lawn, hitting every bull in each lane. This stopped all of the bulls dead in their tracks, finally allowing the melon pults to do their thing and destroy all of the zombies without the stupid bulls getting in the way. And with that tricky level done, we finished the run. So, how much of OG Plants vs Zombies 2 is possible with just one seed slot? The only impossible mainline levels were Ancient Egypt Day 11, which I believe could be possible with extreme luck, and Wild West Day 5, which we know for sure is impossible. Apart from these two levels, the whole game was possible, which includes the whole of Pirate Seas. So without counting the optional levels and only counting the mandatory mainline levels, there are 31 levels in this game. That means that 29 out of 31 levels were possible, totaling to 94% of the game. Overall, a really good result, and this challenge in general is really fun since it doubled as a massive nostalgia trip. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.